The year is 1968, and only their third year of existence, the Miami Dolphins were just four seasons away from making history. The 72 Dolphins stand as the only team in the modern era to finish undefeated. It took them less than a decade to build one of the all-time NFL dynasties. One of the biggest catalysts to this was the 1968 draft. Some of their selections included Jim Kick, a Pro Bowl running back, Dick Anderson, who became one of the best defensive backs in the league, and Larry Zonka, one of the baddest dudes this league has ever seen. Not only is the dude a Hall of Famer, but he topped off arguably the greatest trio of running backs ever. But none of these dudes are who we're going to talk about in this video. Later in that same draft, the Dolphins selected the fastest man in the entire world at the time, Jim Hines. With no football experience in college, they picked him for one reason, pure potential. You simply can't teach speed. Along with that, you can't find better prices for tickets than by using the app SeatGeek. SeatGeek brings tickets from all across the web into one area, making buying simple. They got concerts, comedy shows, and pretty much any sporting event. These deals are on a rating scale from 1 to 100, so you know you're getting a good deal. And if you haven't done it yet, use my promo code KTO for $20 off your first purchase. Lastly, big shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. When the 1968 season was just beginning, the Dolphins had not signed Jim Hines after they drafted him. He was too busy putting together a monumental performance at the Summer Olympic Games. He went on to win Olympic gold, both in the 4x1 relay and setting the world record in the 100 meter dash. Not only could he claim the title of world's fastest man, he also became the first human to ever break that illustrious 10 second barrier. This was incredibly historical. It's one of the greatest feats ever reached in the history of sports. Also, keep in mind, this is the late 60s, with race riots happening all across the US with the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr., many of the black athletes threatened to boycott the Olympics in the summer, but eventually many, including Hines, attended the games and made a huge impact impact both on the Olympics and humanity. The Dolphins had struck gold. After using a sixth round pick months prior to the Olympics, they quickly looked to sign the 21 year old phenom. Their coaches knew if his speed could translate to the football field, he could truly be a force to be reckoned with. Bob Hayes did it with the Cowboys. After winning gold at the 64 Olympics, he went on to have a Hall of Fame career. But here's the difference between the two. Bob Hayes had football experience in the past. Hines did not. To put it simply, things didn't go well between Hines and the Dolphins. He gained the locker room nickname, Oops, after his apparent lack of football skills. In 1969, he appeared in four games. He actually did receive a bit of playing time. He ended up making two catches for 27 yards, returned a single punt, and carried the ball only once. And just like that, the Dolphins got rid of him. The Chiefs felt like taking a chance on him after that and they picked him up. But after spending a year with them, he managed to only appear in one game before being released. And that's where his career in the National Football League ended. I can't find much about what people said about his time in the NFL. All I know is he apparently had no hands and was rated as one of the worst players to ever play in the NFL. There's not much else about it. I can't even find a picture of him in a uniform. All I know is that he wore number 99 when he arrived to Miami. This may have been an early PR move for the Dolphins organization to help promote their young team and sell tickets. It's something that NFL teams did contemplate in recent years with Usain Bolt. This is something that Bolt never thought about, but at the ripe age of 30, maybe there was a chance this could happen. Former Super Bowl winning head coach Tony Dungy came out and said at the time, Bolt would scare a lot of opposing defenses, but ultimately he said no. But for the same reasons that Hines didn't make it, you could probably make the same case for Usain Bolt. Without getting into a ton of detail about sprinting, track dudes are more straight line runners, whereas NFL athletes rely more on lateral movement and quick bursts of speed. But this does bring up an interesting scenario that took place over a decade ago. Justin Gatlin is an American sprinter who had the spotlight in track before Usain Bolt. In the 100 meter, he won gold at the 2004 Olympics. But after the 2004 games, Gatlin received a ban from track due to testing positive for testosterone. So immediately, he started looking for other options. That's when the Houston Texans worked him out to possibly see if he could play in the NFL. He eventually received tryouts from the Saints and Buccaneers, where he ended up earning a spot in Tampa Bay's minicamp. This was a very eye-opening experience for Gatlin. 
in Tampa Bay, John Gruden, who was the coach at the time. You walk through the door. Does he say anything to you? What was that like? He did. I mean, I had a nickname from the beginning. So when we was in the, when we was in the room watching highlight films from practices, my name wasn't Justin. It was Gold Medal. <laughs> gold Medal. Why are you running out the frame so fast? Gold Medal. This is the route you need to run. Gold Medal. Oh, that was a good route right there, Gold Medal. The physicality of the game proved to be too much for him, and he eventually found his way back to track. Look, there's been some successful track guys who made it in the NFL. The only thing was, they played football in college, so it's different. To be honest though, there's nothing wrong with doing track and football at the same time, at least at the high school level and even the college level. I honestly believe that they should promote it more, and I take pride in watching sprinters burn dudes on the field. It's usually pretty easy to point out the dudes that you can tell did track in high school. Speed kills, baby. Jacoby Ford, he's won! 